learning about benign and malignant tumor a topic in pathology neoplasia so first of all we will be dealing with the microscopic features the very first one is differentiation so in a benign tumor usually it is well differentiated that means the new cells which are formed they resemble the cell of origin whereas in a malignant tumor they can have a range of differentiation like a well differentiated moderately differentiated poorly differentiated so there is actually a grading in a malignant tumor now here we come across a term anaplasia i hope uh, you remember the term which we discussed in the previous video that was desmoplasia so here we uh, discuss a term anaplasia and uh, anaplasia means uh, i have already said that in a malignant tumor you can have a range of differentiation so in a malignant tumor if it has undifferentiated cells that is called anaplastic tumors and this anaplasia is a very characteristic feature of a malignancy so if a tumor is more anaplastic that means it's more aggressive so now uh, the other features first one is pleomorphism so pleomorphism is not seen in a benign tumor uh, first of all what is pleomorphism a variation in the size and shape of cells and the cell nuclei that is pleomorphism so it is actually a feature of malignancy in a malignant tumor the cells can the shape and size can vary of a cell it, sometimes it can be a very large cell or sometimes it can be extremely very small cell now even if you look at the nuclear morphology that can also be different so um in a benign tumor the nuclear morphology is usually normal but in a malignant tumor the nucleus it can be hyperchromatic nuclei so that means in a cell you can have increased amount of dna that means abundant chromatin so when you stain the nucleus it is darkly stained and that is hyperchromatic nuclei also even the nucleus also uh, just like what we have told in case of the cell the cell size and the shape can vary just like that the nucleus its size and shape can also vary it can become irregular now uh, we will be telling about nucleoli nucleoli is usually absent in a benign tumor whereas it's prominent in a malignant tumor now um, we will be discussing about the mitotic activity so it's rare and if present they are normally bipolar in a benign tumor so in a malignant tumor we know that there is rapid proliferation so mitotic activity is very high and it's abnormal so uh, in case of a normal cell what is the actual mitotic figure which we see mitotic figure means uh, during mitosis wh what is the microscopic appearance of a cell you can see a spindle so it's usually bipolar that means the cell is dividing into two cells but what if it if it is a malignant cell in case of a malignant tumor uh, it can be tripolar quadripolar or multipolar so that's a typical mitotic figures and that's abnormal now in case of a benign tumor tumor giant cells are not seen whereas it's seen in a malignant tumor 
and even uh, in these cells are actually abnormal these tumor giant cells are abnormal so you can see them in a malignant tumor and the nucleus can also have some uh, atypical features uh, like it can be hyperchromatic as just what we have told about the same features can also come here then nuclear cytoplasmic ratio for a normal cell it's usually 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 6 and even in a benign tumor it keeps the same but in a malignant tumor what happens to the nucleus the nucleus is enlarged we should say it's disproportionately large so that means the ratio is also changed it's no more 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 6 but now it's 1 is to 1 so the ratio is increased and it can even reach up to 1 is to 1 now when we say about the polarity, polarity means how is the cell oriented, uh, the cell orientation, that is the polarity. So in case of a benign tumor, the polarity is maintained. But whereas in a malignant tumor, they lose the polarity. Now chromosomal abnormality is not found in a benign tumor, whereas in a malignant tumor you can see some abnormalities in the chromosomes so now when you come to the gross features first of all when you say about the capsule in a benign tumor usually it's circumscribed it is encapsulated so usually it's encapsulated means that makes the tumor palpable or it is a movable mass so surgically also that, that makes an advantage uh, because it is well demarcated from the surrounding so that it is very easy for the surgical excision. Whereas there are some benign tumors which do not have a capsule, for example hemangioma and also uterine leomyoma. So I hope you have seen the previous video about the nomenclature of tumors in that we have already discussed hemangioma is a benign tumor of a blood vessel and uh, leomyoma is a benign tumor of the smooth muscles so in a benign tumor usually it's encapsulated with these two exceptions whereas in a malignant tumor usually they do not have a capsule so it's not well circumscribed that means it's not demarcated from the surroundings so what happens they can, they can be invasion infiltration into the surroundings so even it affects the prognosis of the tumor now when we comes to the area of hemorrhage and necrosis it is very rare in a benign tumor whereas when you come to a malignant tumor uh, usually you can see some central areas of ischemic necrosis so that's a very microscopic feature of a malignant tumor now coming to the clinical features the rate of growth usually it is very slow in a benign tumor in a benign tumor when the cell they divide usually they are well differentiated and also the division usually they grow slowly as compared to a malignant tumor because in a malignant tumor relatively the, the rate of growth is very rapid now about the local invasion as i have already told you before uh, you, uh, it's an encapsulated one in a benign tumor so it's a uh, demarcated well demarcated from the surroundings there is no invasion there is no infiltration so there is local invasion is not there in a benign tumor whereas it's present in a malignant tumor and metastasis metastasis is a topic which we have to discuss in detail of course we will be discussing that in uh, detail in a next session so metastasis is absent in a benign tumor whereas it is present in a malignant tumor. So these two features, the invasion or infiltration and metastasis, these are the very, very important features uh, concerned to a malignant tumor and how it is differentiated from a benign tumor. Now uh, regarding the biological behavior, 
So we have already said that surgical excision is also poss may be possible in a benign tumor. So that means it may have a good prognosis. Whereas a malignant tumor may ha it's since it can metastasize or it can uh, invade or infiltrate into the surrounding tissues or organs, the prognosis is very poor and even death can happen. Now, when you say about the functional changes that can happen, so in case of a benign tumor or even a well-differentiated tumor, they can retain their functional characteristics. So whatever function they perform before, they can retain that in case of a well differentiated tumors. So uh, function, what, what may be the function actually? One example of function is uh, in the form of a secretion. So can all the secretions be normal? Are they secreting normal substances even in case of a tumor? So sometimes they can secrete a normal substance or sometimes it may be just abnormal. When I say about the secretion of normal substance, it can be some hormones. Uh, for example, when we say about uh, endocrine glands. So endocrine glands, we know that they secrete hormones. So what if uh, they have some, some uh, tumor when there is a benign tumor of an endocrine gland or when even if it is a carcinoma of endocrine gland, for a well differentiated carcinoma of an endocrine gland, they can secrete hormones and these hormones, that's just normal. This is normal, it's just happening. So sometimes uh, secretion in case of a squamous cell carcinoma, the secretion is, uh, they can produce keratin. In case of a well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, they can produce keratin. So now, uh, sometimes the sec they may secrete some abnormal things. Uh, for example, fetal proteins. Some tumors may secrete fetal proteins. So uh, fetal proteins are normal in a fetal fetus, but what if it is in an adult? It's not normal. So in case of an adult, sometimes some tumors may produce fetal proteins. So one example is adenocarcinoma of GIT. I hope uh, you remember how this term comes, adenocarcinoma. So carcinoma means uh, it refers to a malignant tumor of an epithelial origin. And when it is a case of a glandular epithelium, we use the term adenocarcinoma. So in case of an adenocarcinoma of a GIT, it can uh, secrete carcinoma, carcinoembryonic antigen. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes they can secrete ectopic hormones. So ectopic hormones, uh, that means the hormones which is not indigenous to the tissue of origin. The tissues which is secreting these hormones, it's not indigenous. That means actually these hormones are produced somewhere else. For example, a bronchogenic carcinoma can produce ACTH. They can produce parathyroid-like hormones. So in case of a lung cancer, they produce ACTH and even parathyroid-like hormones. But actually, when you take ACTH, it's normally produced in anterior pituitary. And here, in case of a lung cancer, it is an ectopic production. So these are the functional changes that can happen in a tumor. I hope you love the session. Thank you.